Hey guys and welcome to this video. In this video we'll be proving a theorem that states that the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees. So in order to prove this theorem we're first going to connect the lines or the points OB and OD and make sure to always write this down. Okay now that we have constructed these two lines we can see that this angle at the center has now been separated into two angles. So we're going to go ahead and call this angle O1 and this angle O2. So before we prove this theorem, let's go ahead and understand which arcs exactly support which angles. So we know that we have angles at the center and angles at the circumference as well. When we look at the angle O1, it's created by the lines OB and OD. So we can clearly see that the arc BD is what is supporting the angle O1. And if we look at the angle O2, it's also created by lines OB and OD. And so we can see that the arc that is supporting it is also called BD. But we can clearly see from this construction that these are two different arcs. So yes, they are named the same thing, but they are two different arcs. Notice that this arc is smaller than this arc. So this arc, we would call this the minor arc, BD. And then this one we would call the major arc, BD. Okay, now that we have differentiated between these arcs, let's go ahead and see the angles at the circumference and let's see which arcs exactly support these angles. I also want you to notice that when we have an angle, in order to find the arc that is supporting it, you can go ahead and find out what lines create those angles and you'll see that the endpoints of those lines, when you go in the form of an arc, you will find out that it's that arc that is supporting that angle. Okay, so we look at the angle O1 and then we go on to the endpoints of the line. So OB, we go to the point B, OD, we go to the point D, and then we see that it's BD, that is the arc. And so you will notice that the angle, right, and its arc that is supporting it, they're always opposite each other. Okay, so BD, this minor arc BD is what is supporting O1. Likewise, we can see with O2 that the major arc is also right opposite O2. Okay, so let's look at this with the angles at the circumference as well. The angle A at the circumference is right opposite the arc BD. We can see that, first of all, A, the angle A, is being created by the lines AB and AD. And so the arc that is supporting it is BD, okay? And it's right opposite it. So clearly A is being supported by the minor arc. And we can also see that angle C at the circumference, the arc, okay? So angle C is created by BC and DC. And so these endpoints, we look at them and we can see that arc BD is what's supporting angle C and it's right opposite angle C. Okay, so now that we have spoken about that, let's go on to proving this theorem. Okay, so let's just remember that we are required to prove that, I'm just going to say RTP for required to prove, we're required to prove that angle A, right, plus angle C add up to 180 degrees. So we're going to focus on those angles. So first of all, we see that angle O1 at the center is definitely going to be twice the size of angle A because they've been supported by the same arc BD. Okay, so this is using the previous video's theorem. So we'll go ahead and write that down, that angle O1. And our reason is and likewise we'll see that angle O2 is going to be twice the size of angle C because they've been supported by the same arc as well. So we have angle O2 equals twice the size of angle C. And our reason is the same as the first. But if we look at the angles at the center, 
So angle O1 and angle O2. We can clearly see that these two angles, when we add them up together, they're going to give us 360 degrees because they are the angles that lie around a point, around the point O. So we can go ahead and say that angle O1 plus angle O2 is going to give us 360 degrees because of angles around a point. But from our diagram, we have already concluded that O1 is actually equal to 2A. So in place of O1, we can go ahead and replace that with 2A. So we're going to say 2 angle A, I mean, 2 angle A, plus angle O2. And we found that angle O2 is equal to 2 angle C. So we're going to say plus 2 angle C. And that is equal to 360 degrees. And then you can see that from the first term and the second term, we have 2 in both terms, so we can take 2 out as a common factor and then we'll be left with angle A plus angle C is equal to 360 degrees. And then if we divide both sides by 2, we will be left with angle A plus angle C being equal to 180 degrees because 360 divided by 2 is 180. And here we go, we have already proved the theorem. We have proved that angle A plus angle C gives you 180 degrees. Now, if you had to additionally prove that angle B and angle D also add up to 180 degrees, you could simply do this like this. So remember that this is a quad, regardless of it being a cyclic quad, it's still a quad. And so the interior angles of a quad need to add up to 360 degrees. So think about it, if angle A plus angle C gave you 180 degrees, then by default, angle B plus angle D should also give you 180 degrees because all the angles need to add up to 360 degrees. So we can go ahead and say that angle B plus angle D would also give us 180 degrees so that all the angles in the quad would eventually give us 360 degrees because 180 plus 180 is 360. So these are all the angles adding up to 360. But our reason for this would be the sum of interior angles in the quadrilateral.